My name is Don Fazell, and I'm with a local street preaching ministry called Evangelism Outreach Ministries. And what we do is proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in every opportunity that we have. Whether it's in the church, or whether it's on the street, wherever we, the Lord would have us to go. Our mission is to proclaim the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today what we'd like to share with you is a message about know the Lord and embrace His Word. You know, we're living in a culture that does not embrace the truth. And that is a real problem today because without the truth, there is no life. You see, it's important for us to know that postmodernism, postmodern thought, that we've been sold a bill of goods that is a lie from the pit of hell. Postmodernism is not the truth. But there is truth, and we're here to share that truth with you here today. I'm holding in my hand here today the very Word of God. We call it the Bible. And in the Bible, Jesus Christ Himself, the very Son of God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, Almighty God, the light of the Lord, the light of the world. His name is Jesus. In the Bible, we find out what Jesus tells us, which is absolute truth. We find that in John chapter 3, where Jesus says, ye must be born again. That is not a maybe. That is absolute truth. And we find that when we read the Word of God. As we continue in the Word of God, we look into the book of Acts. Chapter 17 in particular, we find the Word of the Lord proclaims, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Now let me tell you something. When we're talking about the word of the Lord, it's God himself that's speaking. And he's telling to us that God commandeth. That's not a maybe. God commandeth all men. And when we're talking about all men, we're talking about men and women. Whether young or old, rich or poor, makes no difference. We're talking about all men. All, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Now when we're talking about everywhere, it doesn't matter if you're a local citizen here of the city of St. Petersburg, or perhaps you reside in Miami or Orlando or Jacksonville or Atlanta or Washington, or maybe you're, you're, uh, you find yourself overseas in England or Russia or South America or Australia, or even on a remote deserted island in the South Pacific. Wherever you find yourself, the Bible says, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And this repentance that the Lord is talking about is not a simple come as you are and leave as you were. You see, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Lord prompts you, when you hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, it demands a response. There's a lot of people that in life have, have recited the sinner's prayer, and yet they have left the same way as they have come in. You see, God requires a change. There's a change, there's a transformation that takes place when a person comes to the Lord Jesus Christ on His terms. You see, it's not our terms, it's His terms. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Jesus continues to say in Luke 9, 23, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You know, we're not talking about a man be pan be religion. We're not talking about getting out there and reciting the sinner's prayer and then going ahead and living as you were. We're talking about a change that takes place from the inside out. You've got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. That is absolute truth. But you know, absolute truth is something in the world today that is being challenged by many people 
the world today, they don't want to have absolute truth. They don't believe in absolute truth. You know, it's more like an anything goes type of thing. But you know, it's nothing new. This challenge to the word of the Lord has been going on for a long time. You know, at, at the beginning of time, we find that in Genesis chapter 2, when the Lord God commanded Adam, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest of that, thou shalt surely die. Well, you know the rest of the story. We had a challenge to the word of the Lord in the likes of the serpent who beguiled Eve. And as a result of that deception, Eve did eat of that forbidden fruit. And she gave that fruit to her husband, Adam. And as a result of that disobedience to the word of the Lord, death was brought on all of mankind. As a result of that disobedience, man was driven out of the Garden of Eden. And the way of the tree of life was protected so nobody could go back in there. That was a travesty for Adam and Eve because before that time, they only knew the presence of the Lord. They only knew what it was like to be with the Lord. But after they disobeyed the Lord, they were separated from the Lord. And they were driven out of the garden. That was a result of their disobedience to the word of the Lord. There was a challenge to absolute truth. We also see that throughout the process of time, there have been many kings, many leaders in the world that have tried to destroy truth. They've tried to destroy the people of God. We find that in the life of Moses and all the young males that were born of the nation of Israel in Egypt. You see, there was a time where the people of God were growing and expanding and prospering and the Pharaoh at that time was really not very happy about that. And there was a threat to him and to his rule. So he commanded that all the babies would be, would be killed. Now think about that. Think about what life would have been like if Moses had been killed. But that's not the only example. As we continue in Scripture, that's in Exodus chapter 1 and 2, by the way. But as we continue, there was another life that was threatened. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You see, it wasn't not long after the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world that King Herod wanted to destroy his life as well. We also find out that there was a challenge to the word of the Lord as well. After Jesus grew and he was baptized of John, he was taken into the wilderness by the Spirit of the Lord. And in the wilderness is where the Lord Jesus was tempted of the devil. Now what's very interesting about this is that he's regarded as the second Adam. You see, the first Adam failed when he was tempted. And yet when the Lord Jesus Christ in the wilderness was tempted of the devil, he did not fail. And what did he proclaim but the truth of the word of God? We also see that there was a challenge to the truth in the New Testament times. You know, it wasn't long after some really for, uh, strong foes, people that hated the Lord, that didn't understand the Lord and his word, and they wanted to destroy Christianity at every opportunity. There was many wolves that were brought in that brought in damnable heresies, false teachers. A lot of people tried to burn scripture and destroy the scripture so that nobody would have the scripture to reference. There was also many people that gave their lives, many, many saints that loved the Lord, that knew the Lord, that they tried to kill. And many were martyred for the Lord. We also find in the era of the Protestant Reformation, we find that people were forbidden from reading the Word of God. What a travesty. There were people that were forbidden from reading the Word of God. And yet there were men like Martin Luther and William Tyndale that stood up and they translated the Word of God into the common tongue so that the common man like you and I could know the word of truth, that we could read the Bible for ourselves. And what that represented for them was freedom. For the first time, many of them had the opportunity of hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, even in the world today, there is an assault on the truth. 
There's a falling away. You know, a lot of people in the world today do not know what it means to be a Christian. There's a lot of people that think that they're a Christian just because they think that they're a good person. But Jesus tells us what it means to be a Christian. The only way you can be a Christian is to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very simple. When you read the Word of God, you find out what it means to be a Christian. But you know, there's been a further assault on the truth. And that is the development of New Age versions of the Bible. You see, I'm holding in my hand here today the very Word of God. We call it the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. But you know, there's people that don't like the Bible because they don't like the message. And there's been an attempt to water down the Word of God. But know this, the Word of God is absolute truth. We also see an assault on Christianity and the Word of the Lord in the likes of false religion and counterfeit Christianity. You know, the Lord tells us what it means to be a child of God. We find out when we read the Word of God what it takes to be a child of God. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. We also see something that's very prevalent in the world today, and that's called postmodernism. We talked about it a little bit earlier when we first started, but there's some attributes about postmodernism that we really need to think about. With postmodern thought, what they basically assert is that there is no standards, no boundaries, no claims of absolute truth. How ridiculous. Isn't that ridiculous? With postmodernism, everything is subjective truth, and it's based on a person's personal opinion. Let me tell you something. We all have opinions. We all think that our opinions are worth something. But when it comes to absolute truth, this is where we find absolute truth. We find absolute truth in the Word of God. And the Word of God points us to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, with this postmodernism, there's many people in the world today that actually think that they are little gods in charge of their own destiny. What a travesty. Let me tell you something, there is a God in heaven and we are not it. You know, though there are many people that think that they are little gods, we know that according to scripture, that is not true. Also with postmodernism, we find out that they have this view in life that anything goes. There's no restraint. There's no distinction between right and wrong. Are you kidding me? Even in our conscience that God has given us, we know that there is right and wrong, that there's good and evil, that there's light and there's dark. You know, that is truth. It's not all about me. You know, a lot of people in postmodernism want to say, don't judge me. But let me tell you something. The word of the Lord has already made the judgment. And it's about high time that we start picking up the word of God and reading it. You know, there was a time that people didn't have the opportunity to read the Word of God, but we are blessed with the privilege of having the Word of God today that we can read it for ourselves and know the God of all creation. You see, there's a, a passage of Scripture in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20, that tells us a lot about this postmodern modern thought. This is what the Word of the Lord actually has to say. Woe well, unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put, her, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. But you know, even though there's a lot of people in the world today that believe in postmodernism, the truth prevails. The truth prevails. Truth is not what we make it. Truth is not what we make it. You know, there's no Christmas without Jesus. Can anybody attest to that? There's no Christmas without Jesus. And there's no gospel without the truth. The Word of God is the standard that Christians live by. 
No matter how many attempts there have been against the truth of the Word of God, know this. The Word of the Lord endureth forever. When we read the Word of God, we find out what truth is all about. And let me tell you something. Jesus is very clear. In John 14, 6, the Word of the Lord says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let me tell you something. That is absolute truth. What that simply says is that there's only one way to heaven. You can't get to heaven because you're a good person. You see, when it comes to God's standard of righteousness, there are none righteous. No, not one. All of our, fil all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. It's something that you need to understand. You can't get into heaven because you think that you're a good person. You can't get into heaven because you got the money and you want to pay your way into heaven. The word of the Lord is very clear. Again, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Folks, that is absolute truth. And it's high time that we pick up the word of God and read it again. In this Christmas season, remember that Jesus is Emmanuel, and that means God with us. And let me tell you something about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's no longer a baby laying in that manger. You see, Jesus had a purpose coming into this world. He had it always in mind to do the will of his Father in heaven. He lived a perfect, sinless, spotless life. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Think about that for a minute. He's the God-man that came into this world. He did no sin. You know, he went into this world and he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear. People that couldn't walk, he caused them to walk again by speaking the word. You see, that is my Jesus. And that's who we're talking about here today is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus continued his earthly ministry after he was baptized. As we talked about, he was led into the wilderness and was tempted. And after he went through that temptation, he continued his ministry. He went and did things that nobody else could ever, ever do. That is my Jesus. Jesus continued his earthly ministry. And there was a time that it was time for him to offer himself on the cross of Calvary. Now think about something. Think about what it took for Jesus to go on that cross of Calvary. That was a big deal. But you know, Jesus did that. Jesus offered himself on the cross of Calvary as an atonement for sin, where he took on himself the just wrath of God in the place of his people for all who believe in him. It's important to understand why Jesus died. You see, we talked about earlier in the Garden of Eden and how Sin was brought into the world, and as a result of that, death was brought into the world. And the Bible clearly says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So as we see this, we see Jesus on the cross of Calvary, dying in the place of his people, of all who would come to him in repentance. What an awesome, mighty, loving Savior Jesus is. Not only did he live a life of perfection, but he died on the cross of Calvary, was buried, and he rose again on the third day, demonstrating that he is who he says that he is. But you know, there's something that he expects of you and me. And that is that we turn from our sin and repentance and place our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, And thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you want to get to know Jesus, then turn to Jesus and live. He can change you from the inside out. He can do for you what nobody else can do or even would do. The Bible says, God commandeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us think about the love of God if you've ever considered how much does God love me 
Look no further than the cross of Calvary. That's how much God loves you and me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So here today, if you hear the word of truth and you believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, don't put off to tomorrow what you can do today. Turn from your sin and repentance and place your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah, come on. Day you 